Welcome, viewers, back to the Atheist Roundtable with your host, David Olvero, the Preaching Humanist, and my co-host today, we have Andrew Minoj and Eric, all three of my buddies here with me today. So, guys, we had some fun this morning. Uh, before we get into the topic, uh, the roundtable today, we went to the state capitol building. Uh, this is our second time out there, holding up our signs of separation of church and state, ask an atheist, and secular humanism, good without God. So it was kind of fun this morning. So if you're viewing and you wonder what this show is about, well, I do particular topics on my show, The Preaching Humanist, and then my buddies and I um, co-host and maybe some guest co-host in the future uh, will discuss the topic and so forth. Um, so real quick, give me a couple minutes here, guys and viewers. I'm going to give a quick summary over the message I gave a few weeks ago on the threat of Christian dominionism, and then I'll open it up to you guys and we can get into it. Um, so I started out with a definition of dominionism. If you didn't see the episode, viewers, please go back and watch it. Uh, basically, dominionism is a group of political ideologies uh, that seek to institute a nation governed by Christians based on this book right here, Biblical Law. And you're thinking, oh, you're just a cynic, David. You just are negative. Well, um, ever since, let's see, November of 2016, I've changed a little bit. I never thought America would vote uh, the way they did. So I can see the Christian right influencing our government and public schools in a very serious and scary way. Uh, real quick, um, where do these people get this idea? In the episode, I went over the scriptures in Isaiah chapter 9, Isaiah chapter 2, Zechariah 14, Revelation 2. They believe that Jesus himself will come back, flying down to earth, setting up a political kingdom. It's all in the Bible. Um, again, Isaiah 2, Isaiah 9, Zechariah 14, and Revelation 2. And Christians will rule, and the law of the Lord shall go forth from the church in the mountain, and all nations will come to it and receive the word of the Lord. So we see this already in our government. We see particular government officials there, and they're pushing for it more and more, and it's a little scary. We want rights for all. So that's what I want to talk about today, and, and I really want to let you guys emphasize uh, the importance of the dangers of the Christian writing government and even public schools. So let's leave it open. Mano? So, um, yes, so um, I did not grow up as a Christian, so I have um, an idea uh, about what you just introduced us, the, the dominionism. It, well, everything else aside, it is a dangerous idea. It's a formula for hatred and suffering in the world. That's what. That's the first thing that comes to my mind. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, and I think it's you know, I think it's uh, we should be careful when we're addressing the the issue, addressing the problem, um, that we uh, that we. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, I, I want to articulate this uh, the best way possible. Yeah. Uh, when you said hatred, right? Uh, now, you, Mary, you very well could be true. A lot of them may be motivated by hatred, but I think the majority of them aren't. And I think if we attack the problem, problem by saying, you know, you guys are, you know, you're, you know, it's hatred, you know, I think that just kind of like entrenches them even deeper into their kind of, you know, it makes it. And so I think it's important that to, for us to recognize that a lot of the people who believe a dominionist kind of ideology are just like people who believe any other kind of you know, religious belief that that can seem very hateful to us. They will tell you that no, we don't hate anybody. We're we're we we you know we you know they'll uh, say like we hate the sin, but we love the sinner. Uh, that kind of thing. just a minor correction there. Uh -huh. I use the word danger, mm -hmm. not hatred. No, you said it has something about hate, mm -hmm. hateful or hateful oh, hatred. I? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, you know, the bottom line is is that it is mm -hmm. you know, and it's about fear. Because And it's about exclusion. You know, if you're going to mm -hmm. go by that and you're going to set up a government based on that, think about mm -hmm. all the people that that book tells us to exclude and be fearful mm -hmm. of and all the bad things mm -hmm. that it says. So if you're going to mm -hmm. set up a government that is even remotely 
based on that, which people are and want and has mm-hmm. happening currently right now. Mm-hmm. It is. It is. There, there is hatred in there. It's hatred against gay people, hatred mm-hmm. against people of different colors and different other beliefs. I mean, it's not about inclusion. It's about exclusion. Right. I got you. But, you know, for example, when you said hatred against gay people, almost every one of them will tell you, will respond to that and say, whoa, wait a minute. We don't hate gay people. We just, we just, you know, think they're sinning and we want to save their souls too. We want them to repent from their sin and we yes. don't hate them. We love them. Well, that's what so, they that's, say in right. public. Or in, right. That's what they say in mm-hmm. public. But have you heard what some of them say in mm-hmm. private? Because I have. Sure, mm-hmm. sure. But, people yeah. that I'm still friends with to this day who mm-hmm. really think that homosexuality mm-hmm. is a sin that is mm-hmm. to the extent of, you know, treating them not only like second class citizens, but just like, you know, mm-hmm. dirt beneath their feet. Yeah, you know, that, I mean, it's, it, it, mm-hmm. to me, it is scary. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, there's that, that too. That's there's what um, I have to say when you said, oh, we're not um, persecuting them. We're just wanting to save their souls. Well, that idea is the seed of um, seeing people as others and, you know, the people in our own group and outside the group. Mm-hmm. And there is the seed for enmity. It it just goes down from there. From there, uh, people that are just compassionate by nature, they can take the moderate uh, approach of, oh, we're just trying to save their souls. But then there's going to be variations within that group where some people are inspired more by um, more concrete uh, or violent measures. And they're going to say, no, let's stop them by force. And there mm-hmm. lies in the problem. Well, and if, if God was so wise and all-knowing, he, um, God could have prevented this by not using that language. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. there goes the um, big bomb that this religious text yeah. is. Well, let me, let me uh, this is good, but I do want to get back to why we need to fight this and how prevalent it is in our society. So I said in my message a couple of weeks ago that I was a theocratic dominionist preacher back in the 70s and 80s. I was there when it kind of began, the late 70s and 80s, where we had the moral majority, Jerry Falwell, all those guys. So my father, my big brother, my late big brother, and myself were all preachers, and we were in the front row in the Waco Convention Center at a Christian theocratic dominionist rally. I mean, I was there, man, I and mean, these people are serious. So a lot of my atheist friends or even some progressive liberals are kind of saying, oh, David, they'll never, they don't have much power and authority. They'll never take over our government. They'll never reverse Roe versus Wade. They'll never infringe on freedoms for everybody. They want to, trust me. I was one of them. And I've got, and again, this is where they get the idea. That's yeah. why I fight this right here. So I've given you the scriptures, and there, I still have a hard time convincing some secular people and atheists the importance of this. And I'm not being cynical. I'm being a realist. I'm a positive type guy. I really believe it's going to work out, but we can't just sit here and be apathetic. And by the way, I'm going to bring a message out on that pretty soon. Right. I mean, you I, can't just sit I, back and say, oh, you know, they're just a bunch of crazies and all oh, that'll never mm-hmm. happen. That's a recipe for it actually to happen, mm-hmm. you know, because it, you know, some, uh, some, some of this started back in late 70s, early 80s uh, with a guy named R.J. Rush Dooney. And he, uh, you know, he was a out in the open dominion, dominionist, you know, and he started in a very small group. And, you know, but they were very politically smart. And they said, we don't go straight to the top and we don't change this by let's get somebody to run for president. We change this and we get these, um, you know, our desire to do this out there by going to the small communities and getting people Absolutely. to run for the political power spots in the Republican Party and get on the the um, school boards and to get on the city councils and all that. And that's mm-hmm. how we're going to change it. And they started that back in the late 70s, early 80s, and they have. And mm-hmm. they, there's examples of it. I mean, Idaho has a law that protects faith healers, families mm-hmm. whose children mm-hmm. might die because they don't take their um, kid to the doctor because mm-hmm. they're sick. And it happens frequently, but you can't prosecute them in Idaho. Mm-hmm. There's an actual law in Idaho that, that, right, that protects them. Basically human right violation right there. Exactly. So, you know, it, that's a perfect example. And that's a just one example of many. 
that you know that are already occurring so it's a small not none of that nothing like that ever happens quickly and overnight mm -hmm. it's always small incremental steps and then before you know it you wake up and they're controlling more of your life than yes. you ever thought possible so this is a um, you know very common with people and causes all over it's that um, if the majority are relative in relative comfort they're going to be apathetic towards it they're yeah. not going to worry about it. let's not worry mm -hmm. about it uh, and then uh, well, the thing starts growing and when it hits, when it starts affecting them, that's when they rise up. But by then it's too late. Right. So um, mm -hmm. I am strongly for um, resisting this movement um, when we can yeah. right now. Well, yeah. the way you do that is by calling it out and by figuring out which politicians to vote for. Because that's what it comes down to. It comes down yes. to politics. Mm -hmm. Well, look who we have right now. I mean, think about this. How yeah. many of these theocratic, dominionist, right-wing Christians are in our government right now? We got a lot. And, and you know, and I think a lot of it is because, one, they, they you know, it's the vote. They, they come out to vote. They're, but they're just more civically engaged than the, than the rest of us. I mean, I talk to, you know, and I'm sure you guys have as well. You know, we know we have a lot of friends and family members and people we know who are very liberally minded, secular, and but are they civically engaged at all? No, they're not even paying attention. They're binge watching Netflix. Mm -hmm. And while the, the rest of us are binge watching Netflix, the dominionist, far fundamentalist Christian uh, groups are behind the scenes strategizing mm -hmm. very smartly and strategically, yeah. you know, creatively to, you know, get more and more power and influence over, you know, our schools, our local governments, yeah. our, and I would not be surprised if they succeed in overturning Roe v. Wade okay. within the next few years. In fact, I just saw an article, was it yesterday? I think it was, was it Iowa? Uh, 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 where the governor uh, just passed a rule, uh, a law there where if um, if there's a heartbeat, yep. you can't, mm -hmm. you can't, you know, so, so I get, I think that gives you maybe like four to six weeks, mm -hmm. you know, in the first, if you don't, oh, if it's not um, in the first four to can, six weeks, you can't. Can you complete what it was against? Mm -hmm. Because I don't think many would uh, catch that. It was against abortion. Yes. Yeah. Can yes. Make that right. Oh, I'm sorry. That if there's a heartbeat, mm -hmm. and once you detect a heartbeat, then it's no longer, mm -hmm. you know, cannot legally get an abortion in that state. So, so the rest of us, and the thing is, dominionists, here's what's interesting about it. Dominion, dominionists aren't even the majority of Christians, mm -hmm. at least not consciously. Most mm -hmm. Christians wouldn't identify as dominionist, uh, but the ones who are, are the, they're behind our, you know, while, while we're distracted with our, you know, silliness, they're civically engaged. Mm -hmm. They're, they're getting their agenda done. The rest of us need to step up and be as engaged as they are, mm -hmm. or we're going to regret it Absolutely. <laughs> if we don't. Yeah. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. It's, it's time we, I would like to, I like to say fire up the troops. How do you fire up the troops and get other atheists and secular humanists and people that believe in the separation of church and state, how do you get them fired up? I, I mean, I can show them, I, I like I've like already to, done, showing them yeah. in the Bible. This is where they get the beliefs. <laughs> yeah. This is where it comes from. I'd like to add, you know, we don't all have to um, go and be as organized and meticulous as um, um, the Dominionists have been in the past, and that was their path to success. I think... Our, um, what we stand for and our ideas are much more universal. Mm -hmm. And if just people just started um, talking openly about it and actually not letting uh, religious ideas um, go by as just harmless nothings, mm -hmm. instead actually question them where and when they see it every time, mm -hmm. that will be a healthy change. Yeah. And I would, um, you know, we, we are um, part of working to promote that idea in society. Mm -hmm. Let me read you two quotes from theocratic dominionist preachers. I said this on my episode, but let me, this is worth repeating. This is scary and uh, it's out there. Um, a preacher, theocratic dominionist preacher, quote, we still want the full realization of his kingdom, speaking of Jesus, the kingdom, the promised Messiah is the greatest political ruler Ever. So remember, a dominionist doctrine or theology, these people believe it from the Bible, 
that when Jesus comes back, they believe, it's, they're, he's just not going to rapture all these Christians to glory land, hallelujah, you know, heaven. They're going to be here for, what is it, a thousand-year reign or whatever? Mm-hmm. Depends on your theology. But they're going to set up that political kingdom here. And one other quote from another dominionist theocratic preacher, when this Christian nation, America, uh, returns to God and is back in place the way they lie about they lie about this and they say we're a Christian nation and the founding fathers were all bo- these born again believers and the lies that are yeah. said about that all the time uh, and is back in place Jesus will return to set up his political kingdom that's what they're waiting for and that's what they're striving for so I kid you not this is pretty serious stuff. Yeah, well, they're trying to set it up now. I mean, they're not, you know, they're not waiting for Jesus to come and, and do it mm-hmm. for them. They're trying to set it up so that when he gets here, they're prepared. Yeah. You know, so that's what's going on right now. I think it's, they're using it. It's actually a metaphor. They just want, um, you know, God to come down and have sex with them. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, these deities all like to have sex. <laughs> With but they don't want us to have any. <laughs> no, 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 no. Y'all, not y'all, just us. Only, only yeah. marriage. But, you know, I mean, you know, the way that we help to, you know, reverse this, to help not let it come to the point to, that they want, where we do have a society that's based on Old Testament law, which is what they want. Mm-hmm. And you think about that, Old Testament law. Mm-hmm. You know, everybody, you know, talks about the New Covenant. Well, I mean, I have the New Testament now, and the, all the horrible things from the Old Testament mm-hmm. are forgotten and we don't go by that anymore. These guys want to rule by Old Testament law, literally mm-hmm. stoning adulterers to death. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. They they think that's okay, you know. And some you know, of them, some of them. I yeah, know Rush some, Dooney was, right, was exactly for stoning, you know, executing adulterers, executing homosexuals, right. executing. Uh, yeah. I forgot who else. He he openly advocated for that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But then, then again, that's, that's, a a, that's a minority yeah. of, I think, even the dominionists who would go that far, or at least publicly go that far. Of course, exactly. the whole even the ones who is, don't publicly go that far right. to us now, once they do actually have that power, history tells us exactly. that extremists, once they're in power, they get even more extreme. Right. You know? I mean, they're not going to come out and say those mo- the most horrible parts of what they believe to the general public because mm-hmm. they need votes. Mm-hmm. You know? So no, they're right. not. But they say it behind closed doors. Mm-hmm. And there's people who have investigated these groups who know that they do. What mm-hmm. I've learned, though, when you talk with individual Christians, they're always they're usually at their best behavior uh, when they're around you. They wouldn't dare tell you what they really, really believe. I mean, I guess I could test that, put them on a lie detector test. <laughs> well, I mean, I know it's true because I've been to churches, and I've you know obviously you know, and I've been around people who are Christians. Most of the people that I know are Christians, and and the things that they talk about in private mm-hmm. when you know. The, you know, there's not a larger group listening. Some mm-hmm. of that stuff is horrible, man. It's and just, they're trying to win us over. Remember, they're at their best behavior. They're, they're trying right. to show us the love of Jesus and be kind to us and love the sinner, hate the sin type thing. And that's what I used to teach too. You always love the sinner. But if you really, really sit down with many Christians, even moderate Christians to the right wingers, and ask them, do you believe this book? And do you think that our society should be governed by many of these biblical principles, I guarantee you more of them would say yes than you think. Yeah. That's my oh. experience. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't have quantitative data and evidence on that, but my experience with the ones I've really questioned and probed and put them on the hot seat, they'll come out and say yes. Your experience as a preacher. Well, no, no, I'm talking about now. I'm talking about as an atheist activist. My dialogue with believers, I'll ask them. Oh, yes, you sound progressive liberal or you believe in human rights, but where I, I ask Christians this, where do I go when I die? Or when Jesus comes to establish his kingdom and the government has changed, like that lady we talked to this morning at the state capitol who was a Seventh-day Adventist, mm-hmm. remember? Mm-hmm. I asked her, okay, when this kingdom is established here on this earth, dominionism, which we're discussing, what happens to us as atheists? Because in, Re- in Revelation chapter 2, that's what it talks about, that Jesus will give authority to believers, true believers, who endure to the end, and they shall rule and reign with Christ. And if you hear Christians talk about, I shall rule and reign, they're not talking about in heaven, they're talking about here, yeah. which implies we have to submit to biblical law. Um, what happens to us? Well, we have to submit with a, rule of ir- uh, with a rod of iron. That doesn't sound very nice and appealing to me, a rod of iron. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, 
Well, you know, I mean, well, yeah, you know, but, you said that you know it's a small group, and you're right. It starts out, it did start out small group, but small groups can wield a lot of power, you know, mm -hmm. because again, they're politically savvy, you know. I mean, you know, uh, Dan Patrick, our lieutenant governor, mm -hmm. government governor, he's uh, he openly has said that, um, you know, officials must look to scripture when they make law because mm -hmm. every problem that we have can be solved through the Bible. Mm -hmm. That don't scare people. I mean, he is our lieutenant governor. Wow. He he could be our next. He's governor, a jackass. He, well, exactly. <laughs> he is a jackass. You know, yeah. and it's okay to 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 call them people out. We have to call them people mm -hmm. out. You know, we can't just let them say these things and and just say, oh, he's just a religious nut. Well, you know, that's the way that down that road goes. You know, in in twenty five years, where you know yeah. they have overturned so many of the rights. You know, I mean, a lot of this, to me, people look back and they say, we need to go back to the times of the 50s. That's when everything was great. Huh. Well, who was it great for? You know, tell me the group that it was great for. Who are the mm -hmm. people saying this? Well, African Americans, <laughs> yeah, you know, not women. You know, mm -hmm. the, who, was it, who was it great for? You know, it's just, it was great for the same people who are trying to, you know, push this thought now. It's, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. essentially, yeah. you know. What alarms me, though, is what I've discussed earlier, is the, the percentage of secular people that do not want to get involved in this and, and do not think it's a problem. I had a client about a year or two ago, a retired professor, and she didn't like to use the word atheist, so she said secular, but anyway. And we discussed this dominionism during our personal training sessions, and she said, oh, she said, they're never going to win. I mean, we'll win, we'll win out. This was during our last um, president, you know, Obama, because <laughs> things started changing. But that was pre-Trump. <laughs> and now what we have in the cabinet now. So we have, oh gosh, I could name, let's see, one, two, three, five or six people. Who's our new Secretary of State? Um, Mike Pompeo. Yeah, I mean, he's another one. So yeah. these people have an agenda. And they do. let's not forget the public school system too. Yeah, and well, you know, like with Mike Pompeo, and we were all just discussing that here before the show started is that you know he believes in the rapture he has come out publicly and believes that that's going to happen and it's going to you know come down and the thing that scares me is that you now you have these politicians who are in such who hold so much power like our secretary of state if he believes that the rapture is going to be a real thing and the things that have to happen to make the rapture happen Who's to say that he's not going to try to direct mm -hmm. those kind of things to happening because mm -hmm. he believes that? You know, I mean, it just blows my mind that we have somebody in such a position of power mm -hmm. who could believe such a fairy tale, mm -hmm. but he's there. But, but so, fellow atheists that are ap apathetic, I mean, apathy, apathetic, mm -hmm. yeah. You know, we have the advantage in this country of a mm -hmm. good system of um, courts, um, democracy, um, and law and order. And so... Um, you know, for the extreme fundamentalists to take over, it's going to be hard. We're seeing that they're doing this progressively in small amounts, sure. But now it is really time to uh, resist, speak up, and let yourselves be known so that they cannot progress anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got, we're going to have to, because if we don't, they're going to get exactly what they want. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, uh, Eric, you brought up the scariest aspect of this, is that they are could literally be putting the entire world in danger of you know because they want to bring on Armageddon. Right. They want to because hey, I mean, who if mm -hmm. if I believe that stuff, I would too. I'm like, mm -hmm. hey, I hope Armageddon happens soon so we can all be with Jesus. I, I get it why they want it, uh, but when they're they have the controls of government, they can they can actively bring it on, and that puts everybody's safety at risk. I mean, they you know yeah so Our, yeah so and and the thing is they they thrive on paranoia and and a persecution complex. Mm -hmm. And so that's why kind of going full circle back to the first thing I said uh, to Manoj is that we, we to if we're going to address them or people who are susceptible to their ideology, we have to keep that in mind of when we're talking to them not to kind of uh, inflame that paranoia even more. Uh, and it's tricky because, uh, you know, they... they it, it's it's funny how they can feel like they're this persecuted uh, outgroup yeah. when they have most of the power. Uh, but, you know, we it, it's a delicate balance of being able to be persuasive and kind of talk them off the ledge without inflaming their paranoia even more. 
Uh, and I think a lot of us aren't, and I'm not saying this about, this about anybody here in this room, but a, a lot of us are, are not very good at that. We, you know, we tend to uh, attack this, the subject in a way that just, it, from their perspective, gives them even more ammunition. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, those seculars, are, they're out to get us. Those mm -hmm. mean old atheists, they're but, out to get us. So we have to elect more, you know, theocrats. You know, we have to mm -hmm. get even stronger. Sure. Otherwise, those mean old secular atheists are going to get us. So we have to kind of... You know, so you know what I mean. You know what I'm saying. We have yeah. to. You know, sometimes the things that we do, messaging-wise, strategically, I, I, can almost backfire and make them even stronger. I disagree. Um, I don't think this has to be uh, a complicated and uh, well-planned-out strategy. It's just I think um, people just need to it's uh, speak straight up. Uh, be um, just speak uh, what feels right to you and. When you uh, f when you try to plan and strategize, then that takes a lot of energy and organization. And That's then, what they do, though. They pl uh, they planned and they strategize. Do, but I think a really um, effective um, counter move would be just everybody. You know, we just stand up and speak for ourselves, speak our minds. Mm -hmm. I think that is the best uh, way to. Um, resist any type of manipulation not just this one any type in general but it will well, work here too I, mean, oh, I don't I don't think it's that simple level, though Minos, but I don't think I think we absolutely got to be organized I mean I think mm -hmm. we absolutely have got to get out there we've got to we've got to you know know which politicians don't hold these views we got to know what their policies are and we've got to vote for them mm -hmm. you know we've got to right. you know and we've got to know, realize which ones are such as the ted cruz's what a religious nut this guy is mm -hmm. and he's very good at being very subversive and not putting it out there in mm -hmm. even though he does say a lot of things about religion and everything but i think it goes even deeper his father is a dominionist mm -hmm. openly mm -hmm. and his father has a does, has a large part in his campaigns and all these other, you know, things that go with along with his political life. So I absolutely think we've got to be organized. We've got to do the things that they they did and they've done. We've got to get on these school boards and we've got to get on these, you know, um, you know, small town councils and all these things to counteract these things. Because if we don't, like mm -hmm. I said, one day we are going to wake up and it's going to have happened incrementally, and then we're going to be unable to stop it. Mm -hmm. I, uh, one one book I recommend everybody that we've all heard of this book, but almost nobody has read it, and uh, you know you can tell, and it's uh, an ancient book, uh, almost well older than some of the books in the Bible, and that's Sun Tzu's Art of War. Uh, he because he there's so much incredible wisdom in there, and it doesn't just apply to military warfare; it applies Excuse to me, say it again the title the Art of War okay. by uh, Sun Tzu. Um, it, uh, I think it was about the third or fourth century BC, mm. um, and, uh, in, in ancient China. And, you know, the most, the most famous piece of advice he gave was know your enemy. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, there's, you, you're going to have a much easier time defeating mm -hmm. your enemy if you know them, if you know what they're doing, know their strategy. And it's basically mm -hmm. kind of like, imagine a chess game, right? If you're playing chess, the, the almost inevitably the person who wins is the player who could think the most mm -hmm. moves ahead. Mm -hmm. Now we may be right. Me, we may be progressive. We may have. We may be have the moral high ground in every single way. But if they're thinking more moves ahead than we are, mm -hmm. they're going to win. <laughs> and so, and that's what they. That's what they've been doing: getting on these school boards, getting in these local governments, and building power slowly but surely while we weren't paying attention. Um, and so, it, it's. You know, read Sun Tzu's mm -hmm. Art of War. <laughs> That's good. And yeah. know thy enemy. Boy, do mm -hmm. I agree with you there. Right. Couldn't agree with you more because um, I tell some of my atheist friends that when I'm driving in town in my vehicle to all my particular clients throughout the day, believe mm -hmm. it or not, yes, I'll listen to evangelical Christian radio. Mm -hmm. And some atheists are like, what is wrong with you? Do you still want to be a Christian preacher? I've had one guy tell me that. I go, no. I like to know what they're saying. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, I listen to the stuff. There's an evangelical right-wing Christian radio station right here in Austin. There's another one I pick up out of Houston, both on FM. And these guys mean war. I mean, they are going all out to take the school system, to take the government or, uh, over. And uh, they are coming together. They're unified. 
And uh, and, a, and a lot of us, you know, it's in, again, I'm not speaking to those of us in the room. We're not not like this. But a lot of the people we encounter who agree with us, you know, on on this issues. I notice people so often they think that if they just watch the Daily Show or or John Oliver and or something and they wa- and they watch these guy these Christian fundamentalists being mocked and then they share it with their Facebook friends, they think they've done something. Mm. They think that's active. No, that's you haven't done anything. <laughs> you know, it takes more than that. You know, uh, it, does. it does spread the mm-hmm. idea mm-hmm. that there is a large number of people that are um, that like what uh, John Oliver or John Stewart. Mm-hmm. Said, those ideas. So it does um, bring out people that are in the shadows out to openly um, mm-hmm. acknowledge that. What I'm saying is that it's not enough. You know, a lot of people mm-hmm. think that they can stop there. Like, yeah. oh, okay, I've, 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 I've made fun of the, of the fundamentalist right, so I can just go back and mm-hmm. watch some more Netflix now. You got to get civically engaged. You know, Absolutely. you got you to get behind people who are running for office against them. Uh, you got to, if you have children, you know, or if you even have... Friends who have children, you know, uh, pay attention to the local school board, uh, things like that. So, um, you know, on that count, you know, isn't there a big upsurge in the number of grassroots people that are entering politics right now, like uh, out of mm-hmm. the women's movement yeah. and out of uh, <laughs> several other movements that uh, sprung up thanks to Trump? Mm-hmm. The, yeah, the the irony is it, Trump has kind of been a blessing in disguise. He's been so, so extremely ridiculous, and, and uh, that he's, uh, you know, that he's kind of uh, invigorated. Yeah, you, don't, you don't have to even be smart to. He's invigorated. This is a badass, progressive, dumb guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right now, it had it been a Jeb Bush or a uh, or a John Kasich or a, even a Marco Rubio who who has, was president right now. Uh, they would have a pretty much a, a, a lot of the same agenda as Trump, mm-hmm. and a lot of us would be asleep and not paying attention because they wouldn't be saying all of the all of the asinine things that Trump is saying and doing. But they but they'd be still be just as dangerous, if and not more so. Well, I think our vice thing. president is right. more dangerous. Right. You know, people say right. you know impeach Trump, which you know okay yeah mm-hmm. I mean I, I don't like the guy either and but I, I worry about that. You mm-hmm. know what happens in when Mike Pence is our president. You know I mean, that. He, you want to talk about dominionism yeah, and he's true dominionist. Oh, yeah. I think he'd fit that mold very well. Well, he mm-hmm. believes that Satan put in the mind a, the, the thought of evolution, the idea of evolution into the mind of Charles Darwin. That's our vice president. Yeah. And he's that, completely anti-science and evolution. And that seems and so, so ridiculous to mm-hmm. people who, I guess, you know, who put a little thought into things and who don't just buy into the things that our mother and father told us from when we were mm-hmm. two years old. And it seems ridiculous, but it's very scary. Mm-hmm. You know, it, it should mm-hmm. be. It should yeah. scare you, you know, to think about that. This guy is our vice president, very well mm-hmm. could be our president, even if, even if Trump doesn't get impeached, mm-hmm. which he probably won't. You know, when Trump is out of office, Pence will come right up behind him and, and, and run, you know. So, I mean, he could be our president one day unless we, not just we, but a lot of people, you know, point to this stuff and go, do you really want to live by Old Testament law? Even people who are religious and who, you know, think the Bible is the, you know, end word on everything, have them, well, go read Old Testament so, law and see what it says and see if you could live by those mm-hmm. laws right now. Are you living by those laws? And then find out what the punishment is. Mm-hmm. And so would you be, are you going to be included in all this glory and all this, you know, salvation? Are you going to be one of those ones who, whether you know it or not, is not going to live up to these laws and you're going to be one of the ones that are punished? Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. progressive liberals, get your act together. Make sure that Trump survives the full um, period of his presidency mm-hmm. without injury. <laughs> and, and, and right, and to, and to uh, uh, minimize the potential partisanship here, uh, I'd also say, you know, just secularists in general, those who are, are for the separation of church and state, uh, regardless of where your other politics are. I mean, y- you can be on our side too. You know, you can help in this regard as well. I mean, we, in fact, we, uh, today we had, uh, we had, we met several libertarians. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah. so, yeah, I mean, Economically, you well, know, we may is, disagree is, with yeah, them, but disagree. on social policy and, you know, in, in secularism, we're on the same yeah. side. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, because, you know, I mean, on, I believe on our side, we're not trying to take away people's religion at all. Mm-hmm. Everybody gets to have their own religion, mm-hmm. but keep it out of government completely, every mm-hmm. religion. But on the other side, 
it is all about religion, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and, and that's, and that's what it is. It's, you know, they're yeah. not going to, once that happens, then, you know, what, what I, you know, who's going to be that person who goes by this old Testament law and who stones mm -hmm. that man or woman who was unfaithful to their yeah. wife, or who's going to be that person who beheads the Muslim who lives down the street. Yeah. That's what I want. I want to know from them. Who, who's going to do that? Are you, you know, meaning that person who wants this to happen, are you going to be that yeah. person? Are you going to take up that sword and chop off this guy's head who did nothing else but yep. disagree with something you said? And, and that reminds me, I want, I want to, <laughs> what you just said reminded me that a, a pet peeve of mine, I often hear people say that, you know, I forgot who originally said it. It might have even been MLK, something about the, the arc of history bends towards justice or something like that. Or, or that, I, so, I, you know, what I, I, I hear from a lot of people who just have this idea that, that, well, you know, we're getting more and more secular and more and more progressive, and it, that's the direction we're going in. So since we're going in that direction anyway as a society, we can just kind of be complacent and let it keep going in that direction. Well, that's not how history works. Mm -hmm. You know, it, it, you know it, the tides mm -hmm. go in and out. You know, the, yeah. you, you know it's mm -hmm. not always going to go in a straight progressive direction. Mm -hmm. We can point. very easily go backwards. Uh, We're seeing it starting to go yeah, backwards yeah, now. Yeah. So we, we, have, we have to be eternally vigilant yes. to keep, if we want Absolutely. it to keep going in the right direction, we have to be Preach vigilant. Preach it, brother. Preach it. <laughs> right. that, that's good. Mm -hmm. um, I just make Jesus jokes. That'll do a lot of good. Oh, Jesus jokes. <laughs> <is fun. laughs> yeah, I mean, why not? When you're free, like I did a message mm -hmm. on being God-free. When you're totally God-free, you can make jokes about it. Mm -hmm. I would rather make jokes about this belief system and not... Just don't make Jesus jokes if they actually come into power. You know, yeah, because yeah. You I, I, think, then, buddy. I think comedy will be a really effective tool. It will take the well, punch out of that. Well, you know I do. I have some that Christian people satire. Hold that so sacred, and, and comedy is the best antidote. Oh, absolutely. So one of these days, maybe I can come on and do my character. Uh, and it's the even, Reverend Jimmy Ray on here. And there's plenty of good material too. Yeah, there's a lot of good material. <laughs> yeah, there, I think Christian satire is important. I, I agree. There's a ton of good material, and I agree. It is so easy to laugh at these people and make fun of them. My fear is that a lot of them it just makes them that much more determined yeah. that makes them feel that much more persecuted it and does. so we have to be careful yes let's 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 have fun and 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 enjoy some humor about it but, but it will also you know, we, make a lot of them see that oh this the, some the of them yes in it. some yes. of them yes so, some, yeah. you know in fact sometimes shame is a good motivator mm -hmm. sometimes you know it, it's a combination of 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 you know strategies but it also depends on the person some people mm -hmm. will respond and change their their attitude if they're shamed yeah. and ridiculed and mocked others you shame and ridicule and mock them and they point right to the bible mm -hmm. verse what does it say something about you know that they they will you know you will be mocked or oh, you will blessed are those who are persecuted for my name's sake right, right. great show your reward or, or what is, what's the one about how uh, just tell them it's really funny yeah <laughs> right right so it, it's just you know it, it that's where the the tricky part comes yeah. in yeah it's it, I, I, yeah it's so easy to make fun of them but but we're talking yeah. about the toolbox thing of right. logic right. and there's reason. A, Even with activism, I like to mm -hmm. say there's a toolbox. Yeah. Some people need direct in your face, like I like to do sometimes. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you need the Socratic method. Sometimes you need to mock it. Sometimes you need to mm -hmm. be more compassionate. Depends on the situation and the individual we talk to. Hey, guys, I think in closing, let me ask you a question, and then we'll kind of end this thing up, uh, wrap this thing up. How can we, as atheists and secular humanists, fight this? I mean, how can we fight against this religious right, theocratic dominionism? How can we... I mean, you these. have to talk about it, you know, and you have to tell your family about it, and you have to hopefully point out to them, you know, what's wrong about it and hope that you can, you know, yeah. make them see that, you know, it's, yeah. it's not just something that's a, a conspiracy theory. I mean, it's a real thing that's mm -hmm. happening within our society and within our government. So, you know, it has to be pointed at, man. You have to point at it, and you have to say, rec and have other people recognize it, okay. and then, you know... You know, about the terminology, I'd like to think of it as a, um, encouraging rational thought uh, rather than fighting uh, theocracy. I don't know. That just is me. It just that, That's the way it appeals to me. And, and you know, it goes back to uh, I'm reminded of what we were talking about earlier before we started taping. Um, yeah, I, I think one, one way of fighting it is to reduce its appeal and and we were think we were talking about psychologically what makes someone psychologically vulnerable to these kind of extremist scorched earth kind of uh, uh, world views 
And oftentimes, uh, if you have a lot of corruption in the society, if you have a lot of income inequality, people feel despair and hopelessness mm-hmm. in their personal lives and economic stress. It's going to make, you know, they're going to be much more vulnerable mm-hmm. to these kind of, you know, dominionist ideas or mm-hmm. conspiracy thinking, you know, kind yeah. of and paranoia. So if we can make a more just, equitable, fair society in general, I mean, just look at the, mm-hmm. the Scandinavian countries. Mm-hmm. They don't have this problem. Very good example. You know, if we mm-hmm. could make, if we could make uh, a society where people had less, vul- f- felt less vulnerability and fear and insecurity mm-hmm. and hopelessness, the appeal of this nonsense mm-hmm. wouldn't be nearly as strong. Social Rationality and, is automatically right. promoted. What's that? Mm-hmm. When that happens, mm-hmm. right, rational thinking mm-hmm. is promoted. Right. right. Social and economic inequalities play a major role in um, excessive religiosity I would mm-hmm. say, right. in America. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. That's one way. Anything else, guys, before we close it up? Uh, so. It was a good talk. Yeah, that was oh, a yeah, lot of fun. Really so it was fun. We're, oh, mm-hmm. man, next Saturday. I can't wait. <laughs> we're going back to Georgetown. So viewers, I would say back in a little Jesus joke, pray for us. Like a joke. <laughs> Unfortunately, so, I think this this will air after we've already been to Georgetown. Yeah, right? that's true. Yeah. That's well, just know that we're out there on Saturdays at the Georgetown mm-hmm. um, Farmer's mm-hmm. Market, I guess. They have well, nobody cares. Second, second Saturday. <laughs> second Saturday. Second Saturday. Second Saturday. Yeah. And we're out hey. there. So y'all come out there if y'all want to and just mm-hmm. come say hi. Yeah, and we're going to be at Georgetown second Saturday of every month. And we're trying to get into a couple other smaller, more rural areas around Austin to set up the atheist community of Austin, uh, promoting friendly and positive atheism. So, all right. Well, viewers, thanks a lot for watching the Atheist Roundtable with David Oliveira, the Preaching Humanist, and my host. Have a wonderful day.